Hello and welcome to the Mission TV show. We're taping here at the OCI Leadership Retreat, taking the opportunity to meet some missionaries and share their stories with you. And today we have a special show. We've got uh, Frank Fournier, the president of Eden Valley, and Lisa Hodges, the vice president with us. Welcome to the show. We're so glad to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank We're you. happy to be here. Okay, so the first question is, what is Eden Valley? We've heard of Eden Valley as Adventists, you know, for years, but we never knew what it was. He never, I don't think he knew where it was even. So what is Eden Valley, first of all? Well, Eden Valley's been there for 50 years this That's year. That's why we've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And it's a self-supporting institution. I was going to say it's a self-supporting school. There's, a, there's an educational aspect to it, for sure. But mainly, at least right now, we're a lifestyle center dealing with a lot of people needing a lot of help with their health. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you mentioned it's, it's kind of bigger than just a school. It's a lifestyle center. So why don't we look at some of the pictures that you've brought to share with us and we can talk about other things as we go. Okay. Is this a group of, of graduates or is this your workers there? Or? That's a group of lifestyle guests and some of our staff. And some of the staff. In there, yeah. Okay. They came to, uh, they came because they had a health need and we get to minister to people like that at least once a month for 18 days. Yeah. And it's a tremendous blessing. Okay. You know, every lifestyle center, there's several lifestyle centers around the United States. And it seems like every lifestyle center sort of has a niche. You know, they, one deals with diabetes, maybe one deals with cardio issues. Uh, we get a lot of cancer patients. Somehow we've gotten a reputation for cancer treatments. And so uh, probably more than 50% of our lifestyle guests are cancer. Okay, and the age Patients. range is, is broad, all, it's everybody. All over, of yeah, course. we've had, we've had, um, we've had patients as young as 12 years old. Okay. She came with a brain tumor and, um, let's see, last time, was it last session? We had somebody, you know, in their 80s. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, just. A broad range. Yeah, cancer doesn't. Lots of people yeah, cancer needing Yeah, cancer isn't home. age related, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And they're, they're exercising there out? Yep. Getting we follow the New Start program, you know, the basic New Start program. And then we have some extra protocols that we do for cancer patients. Okay. Mm -hmm. So combining here the exercise and the yes. fresh air and the sunshine. sunshine and, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We have an organic farm, too. Okay. So these are some tomatoes that we grew in our greenhouses. And, uh, oh, they're delicious. You guys need to they come. They look delicious. You yeah. need to come just to have tomato sandwiches. <laughs> Maybe we can come by there this summer. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Where are you guys located? We're located in Loveland, Colorado, an hour north of Denver. Uh -huh. Okay. It's, um, it is in Colorado, and sometimes our count of guests in the winter is a little shy, only because people are afraid that Colorado has a lot of snow and a lot of winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it isn't, it isn't that bad, and, oh, yeah. and we would in like to encourage In the area where you people. are, it's not that bad? <laughs> yeah. not no, we, we're not up in the mountains. We're okay. lower well, we're, in the valley. we're about 5,000. Are, are we five or six? 5,500 feet. Yeah. Okay. So we're people almost coming. equivalent to Denver, really. Mm -hmm. So people coming from Michigan or Montana would seem like a... Oh, yeah. It's a pleasant mm -hmm. environment. It's a vacation. Yeah. Like summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it is, it is a higher elevation, yeah. and we had a guest that said, Eden Valley would be absolutely perfect if you could dig a whole mile down and drop Eden Valley in it. <laughs> but so it's a little too cold for them. Yeah. Well, no, just the elevation, you know. Oh, it's but we, it's, in a, it's actually in a valley, mm -hmm. and there's green mountains on one. We're at the foot of the Rocky Mountain National Park. Oh, wow. So there's that That's on nice. one side, and then there's a red rocks on the other side, and there's a big valley in between. You'll see a picture of the whole campus later on. So this is uh, the kind of food that people have to look forward to? Yes. Oh, yes, sweet it potatoes. is. Yeah. Is that meat there? Is that a meat loaf? <laughs> That's a veg veggie loaf. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. actually, we've always served our, our guests vegan diet, absolute vegan diet, because mostly they're unhealthy and, and need, need the best of diets. Mm -hmm. But even today, we're, we're actually leaning more and more towards raw especially because we have so many cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Three quarters of our guests have cancer. Mm -hmm. 
and we've got to do something therapeutic even with the wow. food. Mm -hmm. Wow, so how does that, how, what's the success rate for the cancer and how does the food affect that? Success rate for cancer is hard to determine. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many cancers and then there's four stages of cancer. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, our Each patient's at a different place with a different kind of cancer. You know, there's a God in heaven. And what's amazing to me, in any case, it appears to me like the worst that come to us, the worst people or the, the, the worst the disease, the likelier their chance of being healed. It's amazing. It just seems wow. like the people who get total healing are the ones who are, have the least hope. Wow. Um, Interesting. I don't know what to say. Uh -huh. It's very hard to, to determine success rate. We've, we took a survey one time in, I think it was 2008, and we went back 10 years and we called everyone that had come to Eden Valley for 10 years. Then we sorted out all the cancer patients, and 63% of those who had come were still alive after five years. Wow. And that's, that's good, but it's not yeah. very scientific. However, right. it's... <laughs> It, uh, it was a blessing to us to know. No, but the national yeah. average of a five year recovery rate is 27%. 27? 27. Yes. 27. Mm -hmm. And you had 63 after 10? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after, after, after five. After five, five years. years. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's yeah people good. still living. So, so get, the change in diet and the healthier living that they learn, yeah. the lifestyle changes help, and probably the treatments the, the that treatments, they learn there course. too. Yeah, I mean, sure. God's eight natural laws, they work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, I don't know, maybe these people that are just, they come to us at the very last minute. Uh, the, some, mm -hmm. some of the, the sickest people. Last ditch effort. So they've they tri they've tried there. everything, you know, and when they come to us after all of that, their veins are shot, they're, they're full of toxins. Oh. And so we do a detox when they first come to oh. clean out, yeah. you know, just yes. to just sort of reset. And their immune system and usually is, is very low. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so our whole effort is to build up the immune system. Mm -hmm. And the body will fight yeah. itself, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. Now that's a 19-day program? 18-day. The 18-day 18 18 day program. day program. But, it sounds intense. you know, it, it's mm -hmm. just, but it the same intense. program will work for, I mean, for diabetes, for heart disease, for respiratory mm -hmm. disease, for Lyme's disease, for MS, whatever their lifestyle Stress things disease. are. Stress, Stress <laughs> that's a big one now, yeah. But, you know, these, these people come, um, just wait at the last minute, and they can barely walk. Mm. They have no color, they're just gray. Um, sometimes we have to help them get out of vehicles. And, and we've seen just amazing miracles. And, and when they come like that, and then they're healed, you just know it's nothing that we did, except using God's methods to build up their immunity, and God has to, to do miracles. Yeah. So, yeah. speaking of God, there are worships and, and Bible studies and things like this as part of the program too, I'm assuming? Yes, mm -hmm. at seven o'clock every morning, they gather together, and we spend 45 minutes I studying the too. parable of the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. oh, really? That's what we do every, every yes. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's the simplest approach to the plan of salvation, and that's exactly what we focus on. Mm -hmm. We're really trying to build up their faith and increase their assurance so that they can have some rest and some peace spiritually, and that helps them in their healing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. It does. Yeah, so awesome. it really does. And yeah. we do a survey at the end of every session, and the guests fill out this survey about their experience there. And many, many times, in fact, more times than not, that's their favorite part of the day. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, not even like massages <laughs> beat that. You know, so, so they, they really, because when they're sick like that, they're open. Oh, that's why the medical missionary work is the right arm of the gospel, because it touches their need in, in many different ways. And they're probably looking for hope, probably at the end of right. the day. Yeah. Right. Well, we had an individual come to us in his 80s. He'd been a professor. He was a doctor. I guess he had a doctorate, and uh, he spent his whole life in the Adventist system in our universities or colleges, mm -hmm. and he was dying of cancer, mm -hmm. and he was very, very afraid. He had no assurance. Mm -hmm. yeah, amazing that a, a man would not have assurance after being an Adventist all his life, but it happens, mm -hmm. and his children were with him, and we... Uh, they let me know that their father didn't have assurance of salvation. Mm. And so I began to focus in on that and to 
massage that into the individual, really. And within a few days, he was as happy as can be. And his children came to us afterwards and said, we've never seen him happier. We are so glad we came. And he actually died there. Um, his other children came, and they were all overwhelmed with joy because the father had died so happy. So it's only, it's not just healing of the body that we're there for. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the, mm -hmm. the main purpose yeah. is yes. the spiritual healing. Yes, and not just, the, not just the older people, <clears throat> but we had a young man come. He was 16 when he came. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he was so shy. He wouldn't look at you when you talked to him. He wouldn't respond. Mm -hmm. He would just nod his head or shake his head. And he was very angry, but you couldn't tell because he would never talk. Mm. But at the end of the first session, he got up to give a testimony and he said, I was very, very angry. I, his mother had died 10 years before from cancer. Mm. And he had had a very, well, dysfunctional life after that, mm. you know, because anyway. And, but he was determined to excel in school he had a goal, even at that really young age, to go to an Ivy League school. He wanted to become a top lawyer in the country and make tons of money. And he was in a high school of his senior class for over 400 people. He was wow. one of the top three students. Wow. Mm. And his whole focus was, was that. Mm -hmm. And then he got this cancer. Very good cancer. It's a very oh. aggressive, very fast-growing cancer. And within a few months, he was, he, when he came to us, it was, it was really bad. But he... Um, he said, after being here and after seeing how the staff just has dedicated their life to God's work, to, to work for somebody else, mm -hmm. this is happiness. He said, I know why this happened now. And he was with us for four sessions, and he got baptized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he came with a bodyguard, actually. Tell him about the bodyguard. <laughs> well, the bodyguard was obviously trained in that realm, you know, and he, he you couldn't even big. say, a, yeah, he was big and he was strong and he was mean looking. Okay. <laughs> and when I would speak to the young man, the bodyguard was right there, weighing every word and ready to pounce, it seemed like. I didn't think there'd be a hope for this guy for anything, but it turned out he was so impressed with what he found at Eden Valley that um, he went home, married the young man's cousin, and both of them are Adventists in an Adventist yeah. church in the New York. Is. The yes. bodyguard is. Yeah, and, and they're yeah. first generation wow. Italian immigrants, okay. really, you know, steeped in Catholic Catholicism. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay. And so I'll be preaching at their church in May for a week of prayer. Praise, Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the yeah, that's really in New York. <laughs> okay, so we've been talking about the, the Lifestyle Center. This mm -hmm. is part of the process. Mm -hmm. Meeting with a doctor and having we have we have medical doctors we have therapists this actually is a therapist okay yes. was a therapist mm -hmm. checking the vital signs and keeping track mm -hmm. of yes. where they're at mm -hmm. yes he's probably about to oh, give the treatment going the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> and that's our that's our lifestyle center we have two buildings for the lifestyle center and they're converted houses and so that's why now we're determined to build a new lifestyle center. So you build it specific to what you need instead of having to Just say, okay, this has to be over here because that's where yes, the building yes, yes. is. Well, what's happening now is we introduce so many new uh, approaches to treating cancer and other things that we're crowding ourselves all the time, mm -hmm. more and more, and we're, we're starting yeah. to be just entangled in ourselves. Don't have enough room. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're having to do the therapies in little corners and, and nooks and crannies, and, <laughs> and we have stairs, and, and, you know, it's just not really conducive to... Yeah. Um, we're making the best of it, and God is really blessing, but we really need to integrate everything into one building. We need to modernize. This mm -hmm. is just what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, this so is this a, is your campus. That's the mm -hmm. campus. It's that's a beautiful a valley. place. You know... In this part of Colorado, it's semi-arid. We have to irrigate our fields and stuff like this. Which means so, lower Well, it lower means that it's county. sunny there uh -huh. mm -hmm. about 300 days out of every year. Wow. It's beautiful. It and, really, really and is. And fewer allergens. Well, I don't know about that. Oh, really? But I don't have any. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so do you want to share with us what the different buildings are on the campus? Yeah, the main building on the campus right here is the church. Okay. So we have a church on campus, and we have a conference pastor. Everything is wonderful uh, on that realm. Right across from the church, 
right there it okay. used to be a retirement center. This, this is a large building, and that building we're going to tear down, tear down and going, we're going to build our lifestyle center right there. Right there. See, right now the, the existing church. lifestyle centers are these two buildings. Okay. Yeah. And, and so the rest are housing. Staff and, homes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have boys' dorm and girls' dorm, and we have a health food store and mechanic okay. shop and greenhouses. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. You grow your own vegetables there. Oh, yeah. Yes. All organic. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's, that's what, what the guests get to eat. That's what we are determined to feed the guests, organic food. Straight mm -hmm. out of the... Yeah. That's, there's a restaurant in, in the Napa Valley that the, the chef goes out and picks the food in the morning. Oh, yeah. And you pay two, three hundred dollars for a meal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we ought to be there, there's, a, there's a fundraiser there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, we, um, but, but that's what we do. The kitchen staff, they, they send in an order to the farm crew right. and tell them what they need, and they go out there and they pick it. Wow. And, you know, in, in, the, in the summertime, when, when yeah, in the wintertime, we, we don't run the greenhouse because it costs too much to, you know, it's not cost effective. You have to heat but, it. right. Yeah. But in the summertime, that's what happens. Wow, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. So you've got new projects on your heart, on your mind. Tell yes. Us about those. Well, um, Eden Valley used to have a very strong education program. It used to be called the World Missions Course. And it was like a 10-month program where they educated um, students in, in how to be a missionary wherever in the world they were needed. Uh -huh. And so they did medical missionary training. They did agriculture missionary training. That was a very strong component of it. And, and that's why it was 10 months, because it's a growing season. Mm -hmm. and, it kind of went dormant about seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And we uh, really want to start the program up again. I would like you to start that And um, <laughs> being here at OCI, every ministry that gave a report, every single ministry, I think the theme for this OCI retreat could have been the laborers are few. Yeah. Because <laughs> every single ministry, was just they're just begging for workers. And so... Uh, we got a big vision here. We, we wanted to start an education program, and you were working towards it. We hired an education director who's getting further training now. But when we start our education program, we want to be very intentional from the front to place these graduates in a mission field, not overseas particularly, but every um, supporting ministry in, in America, they need workers too. Mm -hmm. So we want to start matching up students with wherever they're called, where they feel impressed by the Holy Spirit to go and help out. Not to start new projects, but to help existing ministries. And you know, later, um, if they develop leadership skills and they've apprenticed somewhere for two years or something like that, and they feel called to start a new ministry, they'd be much, much better equipped, practically speaking, um, to go start new ministries. But we want to help our existing ministries to be what they need to be to right. succeed. You know, right. and a lot of them, it seems like it's not the money that they lack, it's the human resources they lack. Yeah. So we want to provide that, and, but be very intentional from the, from the start to match up students with ministries that, that need them. So yes. you're going to start developing so. a list of ministries that are out there, and what their needs are, and stuff. Yes, exactly. and, and that really isn't very hard. We're part of OCI, and OCI has uh, their hand on all the ministries and their needs, mm -hmm. and so we, we won't have any difficulty finding mm -hmm. what Places. the needs are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what kind of uh, uh, training is this going to be? What kind of skill set are you going to be teaching well, them into? We're going to be looking at um, natural remedies and massage and hydrotherapy, just the how, to, how, mm -hmm. how to deal in a practical way with uh, the diseases you might find wherever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my wife has a program I in Africa. She isn't formally educated, as, as you might think, but she goes over there and she's doing all... all yeah. that. Yesterday we saw her dentistry yeah. and medical... Surgery! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and that's, yeah. that's really what we would like to see, is to be able to instill in the hearts of young people practical little skills that would serve them in the mission field, you know. And even if we can go, we, we need to build some housing at uh, Eden Valley, and so, hey, maybe we can help them to get a few 
building skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. carpentry, and yeah. farm. Right. 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 You know, but I mean, you know, more than that, when these ministries are more than just doing evangelism, although evangelism is going to be a big component, what we want to do is sort of marry the medical missionary, pure medical missionary training um, with evangelism training like they have evangelism training at Arise, at AFCO, those kind of places, Life. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to sort of marry them, marry mm -hmm. the two because the medical missionary work is the right arm of the gospel, right. but you need the rest but of the body. the gospel, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you need to know how to take the gospel to the people that you're helping. Right. Right. And so we want to marry the two in a very strong way, mm -hmm. whether it's agriculture missionary or medical missionary. But we also want to teach them practical skills. So when they go to ministries, if someone is very, um, you know, have an accountant's mind or that kind of personality, focus on those skills so that they can go. A lot of ministries need just people help with, I mean, people to help them with accounting. Yes. yes. You yes. know, keeping we books. Do. <laughs> yeah. We do also. You know, and there are people that are suited for that. Right. Mm -hmm. And writing. Um, I mean, writing is writing, one of the biggest right. to you help know. with communication. Mm -hmm. because just because you're a missionary doesn't mean you know how to communicate. Yeah. And if you don't communicate, then your yeah. donors know yeah, what's going on. Yeah, just how to read financial reports. Right. You know how to present them. Um, you know, we want people also to learn time management and work ethics mm. because wow. a lot of our students come when they're young and they haven't learned those skills. Mm -hmm. And those are not skills that just happen in a vacuum. No. They have to be taught, right. you know, exactly. and so we want to instill that in them because if they don't have the right work ethics or time management, they're just going to be spinning their wheels. Right. I have and a very, not effective. very strong belief that if a person loves to work, the Lord will make his way through life easily. Yes. My son was 15 when he wanted to quit school. We were in the mission field. We were in Africa. And I said, that'll be fine if you want to quit school at 15, but you better learn to love to work. And he went right to work. Mm. He had three dollars in his pockets. He invested it in cabbage seed and he planted cabbage all summer. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he made a huge profit on, on his cabbage. And from that day, he's been a workaholic. Now a workaholic that doesn't have a great positive <laughs> connotation. But still in all, he can do anything. But he's willing he, to work. And, he's... And, and if a person loves to work, he's needed everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because today our young people... Um, are not given a worth work ethic. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more or less trained to sit before a computer and spend the rest of their lives sitting before a computer. There's a lot of other stuff needs to be done. That's what I do. I communicate. I, I do computer and video editing and stuff. Yeah. And I'm desiring. I would love a place for him to learn exactly yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, practical skills. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, yeah. Just, just the work ethic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do something mm -hmm. with his hands so he's not relegated right. to be yeah. stuck in Now, Jason stuff. didn't just stop school at 15. Yeah. He did go on and get a degree. Oh, yeah. By the time yeah. he was 20 or yeah. 21 or 2, he, uh, he became an airplane mechanic, an airplane pilot, and, and, and he's the president of an institution today. You know? mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. built most of the buildings on that place. And this is Jeremy can, up in uh, Norway? No. Well, no, no. I should have named him Jeremy, but actually his name is Jason. Jason. <laughs> yeah, in Africa. In Africa. Uh -huh. He's in yeah. Kibidula. Is he, is he yeah. here? No, he isn't. No. Okay. Yeah, there are one of his um, one of his. Yeah, there's somebody oh, yes. is here yes. uh -huh. from we Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know, these students when they're when they go, we would like them to instead of training them to go right off the bat from training program to starting new projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we want we want these people to even if they have leadership skills that would qualify them mm -hmm. to start new projects, we would like them to have like an apprenticeship yes. at a ministry oh, or, really or mission field, mm -hmm. you know, where they work under somebody. Because starting new projects is just more than clearing jungle and then all of a sudden people will come and you, yeah. you know, it, it, you it's like person. hiring yeah. people, it's work, putting a team together, it's how to uh, work with personalities, personnel issues, it's setting up an office, you know, it's, it's uh, making two-year plans setting goals and and how to achieve those goals and right. you know it's very so we want to teach our students very practical skills yeah. mm -hmm. in and addition to, to, to have initiative to be right. able to see something that needs mm -hmm. to be done and yeah. and do it or at least yeah. talk to whoever's in charge about right. doing it you know so, mm -hmm. so if our student came to you you wouldn't have to to 
spend a whole year starting to teach them with just very basics. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the truth you know. is that if a student, if a young person or anybody doesn't have that work initiative, you really don't want to work with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we just don't yeah. have the time. That's right. We're volunteers. I mean, most of the people uh -huh. we work with are volunteers. We right. did pay our bookkeeper a small stipend, but that was it. I mean, uh -huh. other than that, we're all volunteers. And you get a volunteer with no initiative and no work ethic. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't do too much. You've got much. a major problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so so yeah, when are you starting really... this place? We're ready for your graduate. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the school should be opening January 6th. Is January 6th the January right date? January 6th. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping to be open. We've oh, got our life. Yes. Yeah, yes. 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 We've <laughs> got, we've got our um, uh, education director. He's yeah. being trained right now. Excellent. And um, he'll be coming in June. And from then, we've got till J from June to mm -hmm. January to plan the whole program yeah. and to Very get cool. students get to come. Going. He was trained at AFCO, uh -huh. and he worked as a Bible worker, evangelist, um, for four years okay. and we want to have a strong medical missionary component and he didn't have that background but he's okay. very interested in it so we sent him to the Wildwood six-month course okay. and they'll be finishing end of June okay. so he'll join us in July and we'll have six months to plan and recruit and get things in place awesome. and um, awesome. he'll help us with our evangelistic meetings we're doing this fall our church has not done an evangelistic meeting for seven or eight years, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So we want to, you know, and we want to do an evangelistic event with each class okay. so that they can not just learn theory, but they can actually be part of evangelism, what it takes to do a, hold a, an mm -hmm. evangelistic event. Right. And right. how long is the training going to be? Have you mapped that six out? Months. Six it's months. Six training. months training. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Wonderful. So your first graduates will be next year in June. June. June or July, they'll be coming out looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So how do we get in touch with, I mean, how do, can people get more information about this? About Eden Valley and about... Well, we can give you an address. Um, we do have a website. We're hoping to revamp our websites. You know, websites need to be updated all the time. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been working really hard on that, trying to get it the way we want it. It's really hard work to keep a website going. Anyway, we do have a website. Do you remember what it is? It's eden-valley.org. Okay. So E-D-E-N-V-A-L-L-E-Y. Dot .org. Okay. Now, we don't have a lot there about education yet because yeah. we haven't started, but um, sure. Matt has promised to do all that. Yes, okay. we've given the, the, him that assignment. Uh -huh. okay. He's yeah. our education director. That's okay. Matt so that's part of, yeah. his, yeah. That's part of right. his new responsibility. responsibility <laughs> yes. <laughs> to keep up the education part of the website. Well, to get the it whole, set up. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good. Well, we have a lot of information. You visited your website last night, and it's oh, a did very you? nice looking website. Oh, is, is it? it really? Yeah, we appreciate oh. that. Oh, that's wonderful. Why are, it looks nice. Why are we not so appreciative? It might not be as updated <laughs> as you think it should be. Yeah. It might not yeah. be the recent information, but uh, right. we hadn't been there before. Good. So Yeah, oh, okay. Well, oh, that's encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we're just like, uh, oh, well, anyway. You look at it and you go. Uh -huh. yeah, that's uh -huh. how we look at our website, too. But okay. Well, we don't have someone. On staff to update it all the time and yeah. to keep we take care of it like yeah. it needs to be yeah. taken care yeah. of. Yeah. And so we get insecure about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So you had you had another project that you were sharing with us and you mentioned it briefly already and that was the new lifestyle center. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. going to be fully designed to take care of all of the different treatments that you need for cancer and and those kinds of things. Is this a project that you have the plans for, you're fundraising for, you're Looking for people yes. to help staff it, or how? Where's what's the process, or what part of the process are you in right now with that? We are in the new sewer plant process. Yay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's the most exciting part. Yeah, appar <laughs> apparently, according to the architects and the engineers, that's the first phase. That's where you got to start, and that by itself is going to cost a half a million dollars. I can't believe it. Oh. But anyway, th that's what it is. And, uh, well, the state condemned our current 
system. Uh, system. And so they've given us a window of time That's to get it bad. updated. Oh, oh no, no, no. no, no. It's Some parts of the country right here. Back there, yeah. <laughs> Some parts of the country that would be their sewer system. No, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. That, that's that's okay. uh, mountain water. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, that's nice yeah. water. Then. The geese use it that way, but yeah. you can't stop them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, so you know, this, the state that's the sewer is, plant then for the whole for, It'll be for, for the, the whole campus, campus too. Mm-hmm. You're actually okay. physically yeah. working on that now. Well, we have engineers and... and yeah. We have a plan. Okay. They're working on it. it. Right now, I think we're almost at the place where the county needs to inspect. Well, the and, state. Or the state, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. You need to inspect and, yeah. and sign off. Approve and that's, your plans. That's red tape. That's delay. Right. Uh, and it's, it's right. holding us from going on with the rest of the program. Yeah, before we can even apply for a building permit, we have to have that, the, that the sewer plant, um, not just the plans, but actual location and how it's going to be set up and all that. And that's what's going through the state right now. And they okay. tell us that it takes between 9 to 13 months. Wow. Oh, oh I, yeah. know. I know. I like, know. In the I, meantime, you pray for funds. I know. I heard, I heard reports from Bolivia, and they just go out and they just, like, dig a line and they just do it. Yeah. And I think, oh, that's yeah. so nice. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, why are but, we in Colorado? Yes. Yeah. Well, the but Lord. But you have 300 days of sunshine. So. Yeah. yeah. The Lord can... He can expedite things when he wants yes, to. Yes, he can. He, yeah. he, it could, it he could take one day already. if it were his yeah. will. Yes. So. You have a story about that. Right? Well, just yesterday I was saying that we needed to have, we, we organized the uh, master plan. You know, they wanted everything we want to do for the next five years. And so we, we did that and we submitted it thinking that it would take one year, two years, whatever, you know, to get past all the red, red tape. The problem with that was that Maranatha was scheduled to come uh, in June, and we only six had months. six months left. Oh, okay. And I'm thinking, this isn't going to happen. How, what are we going to do at Maranatha if we don't have the master plan approved? Yeah. But you know, the Lord knows all that, and yeah. he, he was able to touch the hearts. These folks at the county were actually very cooperative, mm-hmm. wanting to help us, and, and they pulled it. They pulled well, it you know, the, the campus is like its 50-year anniversary this year. Oh, wow. And so a lot of the buildings and things were just grandfathered in mm-hmm. when all these regulations came out. And so we were under what they call non-compliance, mm. but grandfathered in. Right. Anytime you want to make a change, you have to be in compliance, which means the whole campus had to be in compliance. You have to change the so wiring. When we you have went, to change the, yeah. Well, the thing is, we have these another... Um, like a nonprofit ministry group next to us. Mm-hmm. And they spent $70,000 and two years on a master plan for their campus and they got rejected. Oh. Wow. And we'd heard other stories like that. And so we were doing a lot of praying. <laughs> and, you know, we were just very, I guess, more naivety than faith because we didn't know. We planned for Maranatha to come. <laughs> But the county came in October to inspect everything, to see what all needed to be in compliance. And they were really nice. Mm-hmm. And so we asked them for their help because we didn't have $70,000 to do, you know, hire a professional to right. do a master plan. <laughs> and so they said, anytime you need help, we'll help you. Wow. So we just took them up on it. And wow. we, um, we, we would go meet with them about once a month. And the woman that, one of our staff members that was sort of in charge of writing the proposal, we just told her, we said, write down everything they tell you and then put that in the proposal. <laughs> and we kept telling the, Marino- uh, the county commissioners, we kept saying, we have 70 volunteers coming to do this work. And it's six months from now, five months from now, four, four months, months from now. <laughs> and so, you know, they really bought into this timing thing and they were working feverishly to help us and um, they said well the big hang up is like these commissioner meetings you know if anybody has objections they could hold it off for 30 days or 60 days or whatever so every meeting every deadline we would just pray Mm -hmm. and everything just sailed through (laughs) and the final approval from the whole board of commissioners it took less than five minutes Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It was all just, their own language in there. It, yeah, <laughs> it was that, all their own language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they yeah, knew. Fact, they they yeah, were part of it. Right. Yeah. In fact, when they got the application, they said, um, 
Yeah, this is the best we've ever. This is the best <laughs> proposal we've ever seen. It's just, just so concise and short, and their own language. <laughs> yeah. It was everything they told us. We just wrote it back to them. <laughs> so yeah. that's, what, that's the best way to yeah. to get their, yeah, but their requirements mean, fulfilled. I mean, only God could have done that. Yeah, because yeah. yes. you know Colorado is very new agey, very nature worship oriented, and you know you have to get a permit to just cut a twig off and. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, you give the so. glory to God for Oh, oh absolutely. The you, Lord <laughs> does what He does, and we're, we're the recipient of it. We're just, yeah. we're just praising Him. I mean, there's no way we could have done it. No, no. no human could have done it. No. Wow. Yeah. One, of, one of the commissioners, if he was indeed a commissioner, I don't know, but he was Mormon. He's just in charge of He was of a one, planner. A yeah. planner, yeah. yeah. And he seemed to find affinity with us, yeah. like, because we're religious in any case, and Huh. And uh, and so all that was just playing together for good. Yes. Yeah. 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 And he good. was he was in charge of a Boy Scout um, Boy Scout club mm. that was made up of you know Mormons. And he wanted to bring him bring the Boy Scouts out to our property to do some volunteer work. Fantastic. Oh, nice. So Praise yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Well, thank you so much for sharing this exciting story of what yeah. God's doing at Eden Valley. And we'll be praying for you as you're continuing with the, with the battles that you're fighting there to do the Lord's work, the Lord's way. And um, we just praise the Lord. Thank you well, so much for thank sharing you. these stories Thank you us. for having us. It was fun. <laughs> you know, when the Lord yeah. fights the battles, we can sing. It's yeah. not hard. You can't <laughs> lose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this special episode of the Mission TV show from the OCI Leadership Retreat at Cohetta Springs, Georgia. May God bless you until we see you again.